Testimony wrapped up about 20 minutes ago in Walterboro, closing out the first week in the Alec Murdoch murder trial. The disbarred Lowcountry attorney on trial for the murders of his wife and their youngest son. The prosecution has presented one law enforcement witness after another, giving jurors the chance to hear for themselves what happened just moments and hours after Murdoch claims he found Maggie and Paul shot to death in June 2021. We continue our live coverage outside of the Culloden County Courthouse in Walterboro. I'm Ann McGill. We're joined now by Raphael James, Blair Sable, and Michael Higdon in Walterboro. Roth, it seems the prosecution is trying to use Alec Murdoch's own words to convict him in this case. Well, you've heard it, Ann. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. And Alec Murdoch understood that better than anybody. Now, this wasn't a formal interview that took place at his property the night his son and wife were killed. It was an informal conversation, information that these agents took down. In that video, you see Alec Murdoch sitting there in his relatively clean white t-shirt and shorts talking to these officers. That is one thing that the prosecution honed in on today during testimony. Blair Sable watched that video. Blair, tell us what do you think the uh, what prosecution said didn't match up about Murdoch's story? Well, Roth, when Alec Murdoch is talking to authorities in that video about two hours after he called 911 to report the bodies of his wife and son, he tells them that he tried to avoid touching the bodies as much as possible, but he did do this. Take a listen. Uh, actually, I think I tried to turn Paul over first. Um, uh, you know, I tried to turn him over and uh, I don't know. I figured it out. Well, he told detectives that he tried to get a pulse and that Paul's cell phone had popped out of the pocket and he tried to do something with it and then put it back. Now, a reminder, this crime scene, we're told, was extremely gory and Detective Laura Rutland testified that the crime scene was not consistent with Murdoch's account of that night. I've never been prouder of him than the way he has handled the pressures and the adversity in that situation. I think I've told Danny that before. I mean, Paul is wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, it appears we have some technical difficulties, but essentially a prosecutor asked Laura Rutland several times, did you see blood on Alex's hands? No, they were clean. Did you see blood on his arms, on his shirt, on his shorts? No, no, no. He was completely clean. No drop of blood that she could see. And Murdoch also tells authorities that night he was visiting his mother with Alzheimer's that night before discovering the crime scene. And Detective Rutland said that struck her as strange because Alzheimer's patients are generally Really worse at night. And during cross examination, defense lawyer Jim Griffin, he said, or he asked Detective Rutland rather uh, if Murdoch had looked like somebody who would have been covered with blood based on uh, the, what they found at the crime scene. And she said that she couldn't say. Ruff? That video itself was about 35 minutes long. Michael Higdon was in the courtroom, and while Michael couldn't see that video, the jury sure could. Michael, what was the jury's reaction to seeing that interview? Roth, I mean, there was little to no emotion from the jury itself, but they were listening and watching very closely. There were monitors, but uh, the, the media, we had to kind of uh, pan around and kind of move our, our heads around to try and see some of it. So we were able to see just a little bit of it, but the interview itself takes place uh, a little after midnight uh, at, inside of a sled agent's vehicle because it had just started raining. And the camera angle that you're going to see is where this camera is. It's kind of where the rearview mirror would be.
and you can see a full body image of Alec Murdoch uh, in the passenger seat. Now inside this vehicle is one of SLED's uh, special agents, the liaison between SLED and the Colleton County Sheriff's Office and one of Murdoch's attorneys. Alec describes what he did when he got back to Moselle and when he found the bodies, how he tried to turn Paul over and on video you can see him hunch over and start crying. Throughout the whole video, he goes between crying, sniffling and grunting. He answers all questions, asks coherently like what Maggie and Paul's birthdays were and who were Paul's best friends. Now when detectives go back to asking about the boat crash, because that's what Alec initially had said was to blame for the murders, Detective Rutland asked how Paul had been handling the whole situation. Alec had this to say on tape, which you'll hear. I've never been prouder of him than the way he has handled the pressures and the adversity in that situation. I think I've told Danny that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful kid. He can do almost anything. He gets along with almost anybody. Now, toward the end of this video, you can see Alec really overcome with sobs. He leans all the way forward in his seat, uh, is shaking back and forth. Uh, that lasts for about 30 minutes before he sits back up and composes himself. During that video, though, I will say uh, Lynn, Alec's sister, uh, I could see her wiping away tears, and Buster, his surviving son, was hunched forward on his knees. Reporting live in Colleton County, I'm Michael Higdon. Roth, back to you. All right, Michael, thank you very much. And again, in the courtroom today, there were noticeably more people today than there had been than any other time this week. And just like Michael, they weren't able to see what the jury saw so easily. I found out today that has more to do with the age of this building. It was built back in 1822, and it wasn't built with television cameras and screens in mind. And furthermore, they say, to put a screen or a television monitor in there, there's not a whole lot of room. They'd have to put it in an aisle somewhere, which could create a fire or safety hazard. Reporting from Colleton County, I'm Raphael James, and back to you. All right, Roth, thank you very much. In the last two and a half days, we certainly have heard a lot in this case. Now, we will be in that courtroom for you throughout the trial, bringing you the latest on air and online. Our Live 5 team coverage of the Murdoch murder trial will continue at 6 and 7 o'clock this evening right here online. You can watch it on our Live 5 app and the website live5news.com, just like you are watching this broadcast. And for more on the Murdoch case, we have a tab full of the stories that that led up to this trial. Just head over to live5news.com, click on the news tab, and you'll find the Murdoch cases where we have stories from years back with the Murdoch name first made headlines. I'm Ann McGill. This is Live 5 News.